Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to talk about the differences between the software track and hardware track of computer engineering. So let's get started. I've been receiving a lot of comments lately about what makes the computer engineering a student have a hardware track emphasis and then what makes a, another student have a software track emphasis. So based on the university that I had gone to as an undergraduate student and graduate student, I'm just going to go off of the course catalog that they had provided, then also explain the different options that were available if you decided to go the hardware track or the software track. Before I go into detail about the course requirements for this university and what courses you would take if you wanted to have an emphasis in software or hardware, I'm going to explain first what exactly the differences are between software and hardware tracks. So with the software track, if you're a student who wants to emphasize in that, you'll be doing more programming based courses or having those courses. So you'll be learning how the operating system within the computer works and how the computer, you know, partitions different data, partitions memory, and how all of that uh, works together. And then the hardware track, you're going to look at the actual build of the computer. You'll be looking at the physical components. So you'll be learning about the signal processing that goes on with the computer and the the really basic fundamental parts of a computer so it's going to be uh, leaning more towards electrical engineering but again it's not going to be exactly electrical engineering you're not going to need to take any more you know circuit courses you'll just need to know the physical components of the computer and how they interact with each other. So the bits and the and and or gates. So you'll need to know all of that and that's all hardware. But those are in detail, those are the differences between the software track and the hardware track of computer engineering. Aside from those two tracks, at least at the university that I had gone to, all the students take the same exact courses. There's only an emphasis in software or hardware and that's it. So with that, I'm going to get into the course requirements for computer engineering students um, at the university that I had gone to. The first semester is Composition 2, which is English course, and then there is Calculus 1, which is Math, and then there is a Physics 1 course that you had to take, and then an Intro to ECE where you had to learn the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department and what all is involved there and what is expected and what you'll be learning in that uh, department. And then you had to take programming fundamentals, so programming one, and then problems in physics. And that this is just a recommendation; it's not a requirement, but it's just one of those things where if you want to, you can. The second semester is calculus two, and then physics two, um, then physics two lab, and then you had to take intermediate programming. So this is technically programming two. Now this is where it differs from electrical engineering because electrical engineering students did not have to take intermediate programming, but the computer engineering students do. So that's one of the major differences between the two so far. Next, it's communication elective. Now this communication elective is of course just an optional one. You can do uh, different options for that particular elective. You don't have to do a communications course. It says see audit for options. So there's different options that you could take for a communications elective. But on to the next one is problems in physics two. Again, similar to physics one, you could take that. Um, it's optional, I did not take it. I was trying to pass with the minimum amount of courses required. So with that on to semester three, which is circuits one. Um, computer logic design. This also required a lab with this computer logic design and this computer logic design is a hardware track course. So if you end up liking the course or class or lab, then you'll definitely want to consider going the hardware track. The next is another English course, which is pretty much for every student. Um, and then the next one is an econ course, a micro or macro econ course, which I think is a great suggestion, especially for computer engineers, um, definitely, definitely take an econ course, some sort of economics course. On to semester four, we take circuits two, and with this circuits two, we also take advanced engineering mathematics, and then we take instrumentation. And instrumentation is another course that is more geared towards the hardware track. So again, if you end up liking this one, then you'll end up uh, wanting to probably pursue the hardware track. And by the way, I did not like this, so um, it's it's very uh, specific. Uh, you, you'll want to really enjoy this class. I did not, it was just a lot of lab work 
and um, making circuits from the breadboard and making different types of circuits. Uh, did not enjoy that. Um, it's part of circuits too, but you know, it's, it's, it's just more of the uh, hardware track. I just didn't like it. And by the way, anything that has to do with programming, that's all software track. So any programming courses that you find interesting or you end up liking, um, definitely consider taking the software track. So with that, the next one is software design. Now this, again, part of a software track. Uh, this is very interesting because it kind of gives an overview of what uh, a good code format is and how to make the right type of program so that it is easy to understand, uh, easy to implement, and easy to modify. So all those things, that's what it goes over. Um, and then the next one is Calculus 3. Again, all engineering students have to take this. Uh, so for semester five, we have to take Signals and Systems. Then we take Electronics 1. That was not a fun class. Again, it, that's just that's just not a fun class. But then you had to take uh, probabilistic methods. This is all part of computer engineering and electrical engineers had to take this as well. Discrete structures. Now this was more, I think, just computer engineers had to take discrete structures. And I actually enjoyed this class, but this is just another math class similar to Calc 3. I think this was a requirement for everyone except for electrical engineers. And then we have a second language. So this again is optional. Um, I did not do this. I think I just took an elective course that was worth three credits. I don't think it's a requirement to take a, a, a language course because I didn't take one. I don't know. At any rate, semester six is data structure algorithms and then microprocessors. So microprocessors was a very interesting course. Um, we had to program a microcontroller. So for example, we had to light up these different LED lights um, at different intervals or different frequencies on this microcontroller. And a lot of this class involved learning how to program in assembly language. So it was a very, very uh, lower level language. And if you were someone who enjoyed doing that or if you liked that course, then um, it's something to consider because that will definitely decide if you want to go the hardware track or the software track. So if you end up liking that assembly language or that type of code, then I would definitely suggest you know going down the hardware track because then you could have an emphasis in hardware and then find a job as a computer hardware engineer. And these hardware engineers do a lot of that lower level type programming languages. So that's something to consider. But I would definitely go down the software track if you don't like this class because, or if you don't like coding in assembly or lower level languages because you'll have the opportunity to program in those higher level languages such as Python or Java. You know, so, so various things such as that. Um, so that's microprocessors. The next one is intro to communication systems. Did not enjoy this class. This is more for electrical engineers, so hardware track. Um, I don't remember exactly what went on there, but um, obviously I've blocked it out of my memory. And then the next one is integrated software systems. Um, again, this is more of a software track type of course. You learn about the different software systems of a computer um, and how they all work together. Um, and then going on to semester seven, so this is a first year senior, um, we had to take senior design one. Now this senior design one was part of a year long project where, where you know companies would pitch their ideas or project ideas that they wanted to complete in the next year and needed some assistance or wanted to have the undergraduate students you know get their hands wet so to speak so that they know what all is entailed and, and to learn from that from that project so a lot of uh, different companies had pitched their ideas as well as different professors pitched ideas and project ideas and if the student would found it interesting or a group of students found it interesting then they would go and uh, do that project for the next year uh, with the uh, professor or whoever pitched the project idea helping them, so being their mentor. And that's all what senior design is and was, and it was, a, like I said, a year-long project, so for the last semester I had to take a senior design too, but for right now, um, semester seven, I had to take senior design one. And then the next one was operating systems. Now again, this is actually one of the I think the only course where we shared the same classes with 
uh, computer science students. So up until then, it was all just computer engineering and electrical engineering students. But when you are a senior, this is where then you'll probably find yourself in courses with other computer science people. And then the next one was intermediate logic design. Now this one is a hardware track course. So if you want to go down the hardware track, then so if you want to take the intermediate logic design class, then that'll be part of the hardware track. Um, and if you want to take an operating systems class, then that'll be part of the software track. So from here, I think senior year, or is it, yeah, semester six, semester seven, this is where you decide if you wanna go the hardware track or the software track. So those are the two different courses that you can take. And then there is a tech elective, which is a 400 level course. And again, if you want to uh, go down the hardware track, you'll take more of a technical course or a hardware course. And if you wanna go down the software track, then you'll take a software uh, emphasis type course. And then the last one is a humanities core. Uh, again, you could take this earlier or later. This is not a, you know, you don't have to take it this semester. I had taken all my humanity courses and English courses my first two semesters. And then for the last semester, uh, second semester senior, this is where you take a senior design two. I don't know if this is part of your guys' university, but again, this is my university and this was a year long project that we had to do. And so we had taken that course and then we took computer networks. Now this is not part of electrical engineers or anything like that. It was just specific for computer engineers and for both you know, hardware and software uh, tracks. And then the last one is an art and design elective. Now again, you don't really have to take this. Uh, as a senior, you could take this whenever, but you do need to take an art design elective type course and a diversity course. So uh, those are just all electives and humanity courses that you could take um, at a different time. So yeah, those are all the courses that uh, you know, this university that I've gone to. This is just the recommendation catalog from my university, from UNM. Since this is just a recommendation or an example of, you know, the courses to take as an undergraduate student, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Um, you could definitely switch up some courses for other parts of the semester, or if there's a professor that you like in one course and they only uh, teach during the spring semester, then you can easily swap out uh, one class for another and change the semester times when you take them. Um, but if you decide to do this and you decide to change any courses or you decide to take any classes at a different time, then definitely you know go over all of these changes with your advisor because this could push you out a year or force you to take a class during the summer. That's what happened with me. There were some courses that I just didn't take my first couple of semesters. Because of that, I had to take them over the summer to make up for that. Uh, otherwise I would have been graduating a year or two later because certain courses are only offered in the springtime whereas others are only offered in the fall time. So you have to really make sure that you have it set up so that you're able to still change these courses in a way that you want and how you want it, but also uh, be able to graduate within the four year recommended time frame. On the back are the different list of options and courses that you could take uh, for the art design, the second language, the humanities course, and then the English courses, uh, the diversity, the science, and all of that. So those are the different options that my university provided that would you know, count as credit for these different categories. And so right here, I'm going to put the two different courses that you would take um, if you wanted to go down the software track and then the two different courses that you would take if you want to go down the hardware track. So these are the two differences between those two tracks. Um, it's, it's very minor, but again, it, it does make a difference because at the end of the day, when you get your degree and you decide to take you know, the software track courses instead of the hardware track courses, then it'll say that you have an emphasis in software. That's actually really important because people will ask you that, especially when you apply to computer engineering jobs. So if you guys found this helpful and useful, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like me to go into more detail about these specific classes or give any more information about the differences between the hardware track and the software track, um, please let me know. And I hope you guys like this video. Uh, uh, please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.